Today's reading is taken from Mark, chapter 1, beginning uh, verses 1 to 20. The beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet. I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptised by him in the river Jordan. John wore clothing made of camel's hair, with a leather belt round his waist, and ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes the one with water, but he will baptise baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness for forty days being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals and angels attended him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little further, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat, preparing their nets. Without delay he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A short prayer, let us pray. Almighty God, we've heard your word. Now by your spirit, plant it in our hearts so we might live for you and for you alone. In Jesus' name. Amen. Today, we've marked a new start for Max. And uh, he's just wandered out there. That's my fault for not closing up the toys and that uh, quicker. But in this baptism service, we've heard the good news that Max and indeed all of us are invited to be part of God's family forever. And today, here at St. Peter's, we start a new series looking at Mark's gospel. And I pray that over the... (coughs) Let me find my voice. (coughs) I pray that over the next two months, we will see that Jesus is the best news ever. And we will let him impact our lives so that we can live our best lives in this world and forever. You see, we're following a course called Christianity Explored. uh, And in sermons and small group discussions during the week, we will travel through Mark's gospel this autumn. I'm going to look at the big issues of identity, sin. What does Easter really mean? How does God call us to live? And the choices we have. And what about our eternal destiny? You might be saying, why? Why Christianity? Why Jesus? Why this baptism service today? And why is this book, the Bible, and more specifically for us today, the gospel recorded by Mark, relevant? Why is it all relevant to our lives? Surely uh, it's not going to pay the mortgage or, put, uh, or cook tea or sort out our clothes for school or get us the A-levels and the O-levels and the degrees and the qualifications we need for life. So why is it relevant? What's the point of reading something written 2,000 years ago, 2,000 miles away? Well, I hope that we will see that the message recorded by Mark is relevant, is exciting, and gives us the truths which don't change and enable us to live our best lives today and forever. 
So let's begin with the first verse of Mark's account of the life of Jesus. If you've got uh, an order of service, um, do, uh, the, the reading is just on there. And it begins like this. The beginning of the gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Now, I don't know what you think Christianity is about. If you think Christianity, following Jesus, is all about church buildings, and I know some of you um, thought that the service was going to be in that building over here to this morning, and it's actually in here. Or if you think it's about rules and tasks, accepting a dogma without critical engagement, and then having all your fun spoiled, you've missed the point. Listen to that verse again. And hear that that is not the case. The beginning of the gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Indeed, it's not even about how good we are or how much we achieve in our lives. Mark is saying that Christianity, the gospel message, is about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And that word Christ isn't a surname, it is a title. It's a title like president or prime minister. And it means God's only true and chosen king. And it was a dangerous word for Mark to use at a time when the Roman emperors were worshipped as God and could have resulted in him being thrown onto the floor of the Colosseum to be torn apart by lions for the entertainment of crowds. But Mark used this this term boldly at the beginning of the passage and says it is good news. That is what the word gospel means. And indeed, that it is the best news. I don't know what you consider to be the best news you've ever heard is. But Mark is saying to us today, in this first verse, at the start, that the best news is all about Jesus Christ. One of the biggest misunderstandings in our world of the Christian faith today is that we think the Bible, Christian faith, is about good advice. You know, the Ten Commandments, advice, do not do this, do not do that. And we have a choice and we think, well, which one shall we do? Which one shall we do? But no, the gospel is good news, not good advice. Mark doesn't start his account with once upon a time in a galaxy far, far away. But he grounds his message in history. Verses 2 to 8 are rooted in the events that happened to fulfill a promise made 700 years earlier. Mark is saying Jesus is not a metaphor, not a fictional character, not just some philosopher. He's saying he's a real person. And this happened. So why is this important? You see, advice is guidance about what you, what we must do. News is a report about what has happened. Advice urges us to make something happen. News urges us to recognize something that has already happened and respond to it. Advice says it's all up to you to act. The responsibility is yours. The pressure is on you. Mark's news, the good news, the best news, is that someone, Jesus, has already acted. It isn't up to us to earn our way into God's favor. The good news is that we are to hear what Jesus has done and accept his gift of self-giving love to us, of life with God, now and forever. Now, if you only take one thought home with you today, let it be this, that the Christian faith isn't about good advice, 
It is good news and it frees you. Mark's narrative isn't telling us what we should do, but what God has done. And then poses to each and every one of us a question. Will we accept this news? That we don't live to save ourselves, but we are to live knowing that Jesus came to save us and respond to this good news. You might be saying, so what? What does this mean for us today? What was John's message in verses 2 to 8? He said, recognize your sins and allow God to direct your life. You see, none of us is perfect. We all do bad things. But God still loves us and offers us a way back into his family forever. That's what we just sung in one of his songs. And no matter what has happened in the past, God will climb every mountain for us, knock down every wall, and he'll be there for us to respond to. But we need to respond to follow Jesus. And what was Jesus' message in verses 14 to 20? Do what John says. And what the prophet Isaiah said 700 years earlier. Repent, believe, and come and follow me. Live my way, not Frank Sinatra's way. And uh, Angela Riffin did okay last night, didn't she? Oh, sorry if you've not watched Strictly. Not the way of the world but Jesus' way. But you might be saying, how can we trust Jesus when we feel that there is no hope, everything is spiralling into chaos and destruction, when our leaders don't keep their promises and let us down again and again and again? Well, there are two reasons from this passage this morning for why we can trust Jesus. In verses 19 to 13, we're firstly told that he has God's personal endorsement. I don't know what, who you listen to, who you take when you go into the shops and you've got Nike and Adidas in front of you. Which one you choose? Do you listen to other people? Do you look for a personal endorsement? What God is saying here, that you can trust Jesus because he's got my endorsement. And secondly, he's been tested. That's what the 40 days in the desert was all about. To show us that Jesus has been tested. Because he has experienced all that we experience. And has shown us that we can trust him. And he can show us what our lives can be like. I think those are two pretty good reasons why we can trust him. But today, will you hear the good news and respond? Will you live with Jesus, the Son of God, the Christ, as your one and only King? Because at the heart of the Christian faith, it's not about ritual or rules or how good we are. It is about what we, it's not about what we do but it's about a trusting relationship of self-giving love with Jesus. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Let's pray. Almighty God, you know our hearts, you know our minds, you know how we look at this world. And today, Lord, we just ask that you, through your Spirit, would touch us so that we might see who you are and see that you are the best news. Dear Lord, as we look at you, and especially as a church, as we look at you over the next few weeks, may you help us to grow so that we might indeed live with you as our King. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.